Welcome to Electron Line. Sometimes we can be really confused as to when we can use Green's theorem and when we can't use Green's theorem. And here's an example where Green's theorem simply won't work. It's not appropriate to try to use Green's theorem for this particular example. Here we have a function, not a vector field, defined as x squared plus y squared equals to that function. We can replace that function by z, so we can write that z is equal to x squared plus y squared, so we end up with this paraboloid. And we're going to integrate along the edge of that paraboloid, along a circle defined by x squared plus y squared equals a squared, a being the radius of that circular path. Notice we can define x and y in that case by these particular equations. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate the function times ds along that integral and see what we get. And if you remember some of the videos of the previous playlist, that will then represent the area underneath that path from where that path is down to the xy plane. So it simply would be like the area of the curtain hanging from that path along that paraboloid. So if we evaluate that, notice we can probably do better by changing this to polar coordinates. So this can be written as the integral over r squared. Instead of ds, we write r times d theta. And so we're going to integrate along the circular path from 0 to 2 pi. So this would become equal to the integral, and since r squared or r cubed is really a, we could say a constant because it'd be good for any r, r cannot change, we could replace r by a, so this would then be equal to a cubed times d theta from 0 to 2 pi, which is equal to a cubed times theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, which would be equal to 2 pi a cubed, or this could be written as 2 pi a, which would be the circumference of the path taken, times a squared, which would be equal to the height above the xy plane, because the height is equal to x squared plus y squared, and so therefore the height can be also expressed as a squared. So that really represents physically the area underneath that curtain, or I should say the area of the curtain hanging down from that path of integration. Now, why can't we use Green's theorem to solve this problem? The reason is, first of all, that Green's theorem, this component on the left side of Green's theorem, is really a result of the product of the vector field multiplied by the differential of the position vector. In other words, the integral of the vector field dot dr, and that would be over a circular path, is equal to the integral of the x component of the vector field, which would be typically expressed as p in the i direction, plus q in the j direction. So this would be the vector field expressed like this, dotted with dr. Now, when r is defined as x in the i direction plus y in the j direction, then the differential dr is equal to dx in the i direction plus dy in the j direction. So it's the dot product with dx in the i direction plus dy in the j direction. And so now when you go ahead and find the cross product of that, this would then be equal to the integral, and of course it'd be integral over some curve or some path, of p times dx plus q times dy. And so this would be the left side of Green's theorem, and then of course if you want Green's theorem you have to integrate over a complete circular path or a complete path. It doesn't have to be circular, but it doesn't have to be a complete path where you start and end at the same point. Now, notice that this form of the equation on the left side of Green's theorem is not the same as this. We don't have some function of xy times dx plus some function of xy times dy. You don't have that there. If you can have the equation in this format, if it looks like this, then you cannot use Green's theorem. And the big difference is that here we had a function where we had the height z defined as some function of x and y, and to use Green's theorem, you really physically have to have a vector field multiplied by a position vector where you end up with 
the left side of the equation on Green's term in this particular format. So it's really important that this is what you have on the left side so you can indeed equate it to this on the right side. Once you have that, then Green's theorem is the way to go. And that's how we know.